tonight. Messaging apps are starting to merge. The NSA backdoors are getting weaker. And how many screen sizes does an iWatch have? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 113, for Friday, June 20th, 2014. I'm Father Robert Palliser. Let's get right to the tech feed. Cue the Twitter berry jokes because a week after Twitter said their chief operating officer's position would remain vacant, Reuters reports that they're starting to split the position between two existing executives. Adam Bain and Gabriel Sticker will share the responsibilities of departing COO Ali Rogani at a time when the former high-flying social media company is seeing a six-month-long 42% stock price drop. Rogani, a former executive who came to Twitter from Pixar and oversaw its IPO, has come under fire for the company's slowing user growth. Bain will take responsibility for revenue and partnership, while Stricker will oversee marketing and media. Speaking of taking responsibility, Ireland may be on the hook with the EU for the lenient rulings it gave to Apple in order to attract investment from the tech giant. If the EU is investigating Ireland's tax incentive, which helped Apple shield tens of billions in profit from taxes, well, that means it ran afoul of international tax practices and the rule of EU member states. Though the announcement of the investigation is a far cry from laying fault, if the EU determines that the principles of fair play are being undermined by what is essentially a corporate subsidy, they could demand that Ireland halt their dealings with Apple or even repay the tax savings from the profit-shifted cash. In non-taxi but equally nefarious news, the U.S. House of Representatives voted 293 to 123 to approve a bar bipartisan proposal to rein in backdoor searches by the NSA. Backdoor searches involved the NSA being granted carte blanche to surveil U.S. citizens as long as they were loosely connected to a foreign target. The proposal adds an amendment to the bill providing 2015 funding for the NSA that would make it illegal to use those funds to query a collection of foreign intelligence using the identifier of a U.S. citizen. In other words, no more fishing expeditions. The NSA can still conduct surveillance of U.S. citizens, but only after they have received authorization from a court of law. The amendment would, provide, would also prevent the NSA from forcing manufacturers from installing backdoors in their products. Speaking of backdoors, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Apple is planning on backdooring the entire nascent smartwatch industry by launching their product as early as October. The new device will reportedly have 10 sensors, including several that track health and fitness, and be offered in multiple screen sizes. Sources close to the matter say that Apple's secret sauce is that unlike the current crop of smartwatches, Apple's devices will offer significant function that smartphones currently don't have, rather than just poorly replicating your phone on your wrist. If the rumors are true, production will start at Taiwanese manufacturer Quanta within two or three months. Now, Eric Lehmer is the associate editor at Gizmodo. We now welcome him to Tech News Tonight. Eric, thank you for coming on. Hey. Thanks for having me. Now, we want to talk to you today about social messaging apps, specifically about Path. The company that makes the social app Path announced today, today that it's acquiring the business messaging service Talk2. Now, Path clearly needs a better source of revenue. Do you think that Talk2 will do the trick? I don't know. It's, it's, hard to, uh, it's hard to really say, but I think the problem more is that with such a crowded ecosystem of chat apps, with more of them popping up, every day is is you know picking up another piece of the puzzle enough to to sort of uh bolster your offering enough that it makes it enticing to use your service as opposed to any of the other tons that are out there i don't know if how much of this can really bring people to path as as i haven't used path very much in a in a pretty long time and i, I can't think of that many other people who are keen on it at this point or who are like itching for a reason to get back in. Well, I think what you mentioned is, is exactly what we're talking about. There are so many different social messaging apps right now on the market, all vying for attention. Now, struggling or potentially struggling social networks from the biggest to the smallest have been acquiring and consolidating either to stem the loss of users or to better monetize. Do you think that there's any evidence that consolidation is working for those companies? I mean, I'm not the consolidation is going to work in the short term, right? Just because you're 
you know, mashing a bunch of people together. And, and you're obviously you're going to have more people if you if you consolidate enough. Um, I think it's definitely a, a, a short term solution, though, because, you know, no matter how many users you can amass at any current amount of time, like if you are not offering something specific to them that is that is unique and, and interesting to that particular app, then, you know, it doesn't matter how many of them you can get in one place if they're not interested in talking to each other on your service. And, you know, we've seen that with things like, uh, you know, with Snapchat a while ago, but even recently with Yo, which came out of absolutely nowhere, and it provides a service that is uh, questionably useful, but it's at least novel enough that, you know, it's kind of sucking people into it and getting people to use it in a way that I think mashing up other services that are kind of, you know, flatlining or even on the way down is, is never going to be able to replicate. Right, right. So the, the mashing together is for the short, short term, but let's talk a little bit about the long term. Talk2 is a messaging app for business. Now, Path also launched today a new messaging app called Path Talk. strangely enough. Can we officially say that messaging apps like Snapchat, WhatsApp, Line, WeChat, and Facebook Messenger are eating social messaging networks lunch? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would say so. Uh, it's just, it's difficult. What, uh, yeah, I mean, what it really comes down to is that I already use, you know, fa I are, already use Facebook Messenger because you know that's that's an ecosystem that I'm already uh, deep in, whether I want to be or not, and you know other things like uh, Snapchat and, and whatnot. And it, and it is difficult to have any sort of of uh, business interaction on any of those services. But at the same time, that's that's sort of what email is for. It's I it's difficult for any of those to to try to uh, you know divvy up any space that they can do anything really their own with. All right. So, so where do you think that magic space is? Where they can actually do something that differentiates them from everybody else? Because as you mentioned, there are so many different platforms that pretty much do the same thing. Is are they rushing to something that no one's doing, or are they just trying to do what everyone else is doing but better? I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. Like you're seeing a lot of uh, messaging services that are sort of taking something else that's popular and tweaking it in a way, sort of just to tweak it. You know, for whatever reason to have something different like uh, slingshot is the perfect example of taking you know the snapchat uh idea of sending like little bits and pieces of uh image and or video back to each other and then sort of changing it in a way just to have something different i feel like the real space uh that there's there's room to improve for in messaging is just services that interact with each other we we have so many we have so many services that are coming up, and all of them can kind of interact with each other using, you know, your uh, your phone number as your unique identifier. But there's still no service out there that's able to act as a as a really valuable hub, which I think is is something, you know, if you could have some sort of service that that even even in the like jankiest hacked together sense could help you interface from, you know, one service to another in, in any way, I think would be a super valuable thing that's, that's nowhere out there. Now let's talk about one of those super valuable value ads. Talk to uh, also has a Snapchat like if a Muriel or self-destructing message section. It's another trend. Now Path Talk messages also vanish after 24 hours, so clearly they're trying to take advantage of that trend. Was if a Muriel messaging just a fad, or do you think it's now a necessary feature that any future social messaging app must have to enter the field? I think it's both. Um, I think it it probably is a fad, and I don't I don't think it's over yet. I think that it's it's still um, it's still something that people are are very interested in, even even given the uh, the crazy amount of evidence out there that you know uh, any ephemeral chat uh, service like your messages don't actually really disappear. They're still kind of out there someplace. But it's something that people have shown enough interest in and then seem to enjoy using enough that, you know, you might as well add it to whatever, you know, client you're you're trying to come up with because it's it's a pretty easy thing to tack on. Uh, I think Snapchat only really got away with it as a flagship feature by doing it first. And since then, it's always become, you know, sort of something you can bolt on the side. But it's really something that's, you know, 
always been there from the start. Like, you know, if even if you're using Google Hangouts, you can you can turn your history off, which is essentially the same thing, but a little a little bit less flashy. Eric Limer, associate editor at Gizmodo, thank you so very much for your insight and for joining us. Thanks for having me. Finally, it's the end of a dead tree era. In just three short days, Monday, June 23rd, Computer World will publish its last print issue. The magazine's first issue was printed 47 years ago on June 21st, 1967. Scott Finney, Computer World's editor-in-chief, explains that the company will continue to publish on the ComputerWorld.com website, which was launched in 1996. Says Finney, trains, after all, were once powered by coal and steam. Computer World is moving from paper to electrons. He also says a big redesign of ComputerWorld.com is coming later this summer. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show, twit.tv slash tn2, and write to us at tn2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. Thanks for watching. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.